just to get this out of the way. If you can go to community.pipeline.ai. Let me shut down my notifications here. So go to community.pipeline.ai. If you would please star this repo, uh, this would be uh, greatly helpful um, as we're going into the fundraising process here pretty soon. These stars mean a lot. Um, I've spun up for each of you, um, and there's a pretty large number of people on the line here, um, a P3 instance from uh, the Amazon cloud. So P3s are the latest Volta V100s. Um, so you are going to, in a short while here, have full access to that um, till at least the end of the hour. I might keep it around for another 15 minutes or so. These are very expensive instances. I think they're some of the most expensive ones Amazon has. Uh, these particular ones are about $3 an hour, so um, which doesn't seem bad for one person, but when you have you know a couple hundred people, um, that's, uh, that like, tends to add up quickly. So please go here, please star this. Um, also, if you wanna, if you can click on train models here, this will get you into the community edition. So you'll have to log in, you just use GitHub or uh, you know Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever um, channel you prefer. So this is the community edition. Um, this is a shared environment. So um, let me just show you, there is a GPU here. This is actually a uh, Tesla M60. Um, the reason community edition runs on this instance uh, is not necessarily because of the GPU, it's more of the memory that we have. So we have a um, you know 122 gigs of RAM here, so I can run all kinds of uh, good stuff. Let's see if I can get to that. Yeah. So this is the entire community edition right here, um, and it's all backed by Kubernetes. So uh, yeah, so please come here, star that, click into this, and then I'm gonna um, also run through a couple cool features here that we worked on since the last month, uh, just to highlight them. So. Let me close that. Um, we have, let me open up the docs here. There's this quick start that I encourage you guys to look at. It's off the pipeline, um, AI, main GitHub. You'll click on pipeline over here. That's one with um, all the stars. And then there should be at the very top of the readme here is a quick start. A um, Couple big things that happened since the last time we um, spoke last month is, Docker now supports Docker um, and Kubernetes. And this is Docker for Mac, uh, Docker um, for um, rather Windows also. So both of these environments now support uh, Kubernetes first class, which is really, really nice. Um, so we have quick start for Docker um, standalone, right? So uh, there's one single Docker instance, um, that has a whole bunch of stuff running in it. So that's not really production environment, but that's to get it running um, super simple without Kubernetes even. Uh, the, the next level would be Kubernetes. And now that you could do it locally, you can actually run a Kubernetes cluster locally. Uh, so this is pretty cool. You have to go and you know check a box, make sure that you're on the edge channel, not the stable channel, uh, which might scare some of you guys, but uh, it's been pretty stable. I've been using the edge stuff for about the last year, I think. Uh, it's been pretty good. So uh, they're actually up to Kubernetes 192 right now, which is the exact same that we're using um, on the community edition and um, for these instances that I've spun up for you guys. The key here is that the context is called Docker for uh, like desktop and, you know, right. So again, this works across Windows and Mac. Um, let's see. Uh, so this stuff should be pretty familiar. This is where you can build a model. This is going to create the Docker image. You can do uh, CPU, GPU. Um, I have examples here of, uh, is it in this one? I think it's in the Docker one, um, where we just added PyTorch. Um, so there's an example there. We have a, a solid scikit-learn sample. And so you can do everything from training um, in a distributed TensorFlow manner. Um, on your local Kubernetes cluster running on your laptop. Um, and then right like that, that same exact infrastructure can then go onto a you know real uh, like full-fledged uh, like Kubernetes cluster using either Azure um, or when uh, 
it's like the Amazon folks actually come out with EKS, the Elastic Kubernetes Service, you'll be able to use that as well too. And of course, Google has GKE, which is uh, their container engine with Kubernetes. So one thing I do wanna highlight, we actually added traffic shadowing. So this was um, a feature we've been talking about forever. Um, we um, finally got it implemented over the last month. And yeah, even in just the last couple of days, actually, if you've been keeping an eye on um, our uh, like commits. And what you could do here is you could both split traffic and you could shadow traffic. So here's an example. Um, so, you know, this would be after you've, you've built uh, the Docker images with the, you know, yeah, so you could follow all this yourself and just do this all locally, but predict server builds that would build the image that you would then push it to the repo here. You can use your own private repo. Um, then you would start up the two versions of the model. Uh, and then now we're going to route traffic and we're going to split 50 50. This is one way to do it and have no shadowing. Um, or we can probably the most normal case, um, by the workflow here for deployment would be we would um, just add that second version B and uh, start to shadow traffic to B. Okay. Um, so you would send all of the live traffic to A. Uh, B then gets no live traffic, but it is getting sort of best effort, uh, like shadow traffic. So um, it's a fire and forget kind of thing. B does not participate in the actual user request response, you know, or the Kafka uh, like prediction, whatever. It's just getting shadow traffic, which is really nice. So um, let's see. Dashboards are pretty much all the same. We did upgrade Grafana and Prometheus, so we're actually on the very latest um, builds of those. And there's some, actually, I think I have a screenshot even. I was taking screenshots for documentation purposes. Uh, yeah, there and there. It's even got a, a really cool new um, uh, like login screen as well, too, which is kind of fun. All right, uh, so let me get through this, and then I'm gonna give you guys the instances here. Uh, we got the normal, oh, and then, so one other thing on the community edition here, we've got this cool demo, if you would, right, so again, please star, please, uh, like, log in to the, that, uh, like, train models, which will get you in there, and then, if you could, if you could click on this thing, and then, like, you can even generate more traffic down here, so we should see things blipping down here, and certainly we do, and uh, I believe this is a case where we have just made uh, 025 the primary. So actually we can, I'm gonna do this live here. I made a ton of changes like in the last 20 minutes right before the call. But let me try to route some traffic directly to 050 here. Um, where is route? Actually, let's try shadowing the traffic. That'd be cool, right? Uh, so, and I should, let's see. I should be able to do it directly from the notebook actually, if I'm in here. Yeah, uh, and let's go, okay, so there's no A or B here. Oh, can someone install the old uh, CLI here? So, tip install. CLI dash pipeline. Uh, one five. And actually, we're up to seventy one now. So I'm just going to get that in here. Tip install. Issue dash no cache ignore installed uh, single dash you I believe. All right, so yeah, it's like there's a bunch of people in there probably running some stuff. So um, let's route some traffic. Actually, I could do it back over here. Um, let's see, community. Okay, so there's no, um, 
B version. So let's shadow to 050. Let's give 050 no traffic and give 025 one. So these are actually named after the learning rate that was used. So this is the MNIST model. And um, yeah, so we should now, if we go back to type to, um, so we, yeah, so let's see here. Let's, let's just refresh this and click here. And we should see blipping on both 25 and 50. Okay, so here's an example of where we're actually shadowing the traffic. Um, and notice too that we actually have two um, of these instances of MNIST 050. Uh, so if we do, you could see there's um, two of the 050s and one of the 025. So we can scale that pretty easily. The scale commands are in this quick start. Uh, we can actually add, you know, more of the 025s if we would like to. But you know, so typically we've got, you know, a thousand of 025. That's the existing model running then we want to test out 050, the next version, um, and we would route the traffic uh, or, yeah. So first we would shadow the traffic, um, see how it's doing, just making sure that that model's not gonna fall over. Um, we have predictive dashboards also where we can actually compare and show the live predictions and show between the two models. Uh, for example, top 10 search results for a given query or, um, if it's linear regression, if it's an Airbnb estimator, you know, we could see how are both models and then, right, so like visually we could actually see how um, their performance is not just from a system performance, but also um, the like predictive performance. So, um, and what was, oh, and so now we can actually route it, let's do this where we, uh, where we route it, um, let's see. Okay, so instead of shadowing, let's just get rid of the shadow. Let's make that empty. We're not gonna shadow anywhere. And let's give 50, uh, or actually let's give 100. So let's say uh, 050 passed. We're now gonna send all traffic to um, 050 and not shadow at all. This should pick up immediately. And let's just refresh this, run that, generate some more. And we see 025 is nowhere to be found and 050 is taking all the traffic. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay. So I think that's a lot of what we did. We've also, of course, been working on the admin, um, the like REST APIs and all that kind of good stuff. but. Um, so I'm going to give you guys the rest of the time. We'll kind of walk through some of these examples here and take a look at some sample notebooks and some sample models. I'm actually going to give each of you your own instance and I'm going to flash the, um, URL here to grab your instance. Uh, All right, and make this thing there, yeah. Uh, let me find it here, I have it in a browser, yep. Actually, let me, I try to set up uh, forward here, let me see if it's working. It's not working, okay. So, let me just send this to you guys here. Go to this URL. Um, you will receive um, either an IP address or a host name. I believe it's the host name. Just put that in your browser and it'll take you to something that looks very similar to Community Edition. Um, and so again, for those of you that join late, if you could, if you could go to community.pipeline.ai and star the repo, and click on this train models and log in and you'll actually get access to the real community edition. What um, I've spun up for you guys is a bunch of uh, separate community editions essentially. So every single one of you has um, your own EC2 instance with your own uh, Volta V100. Um, so it's a P3 instance by Amazon. 
Uh, also, what's the other thing? Um, you're completely isolated. There's a um, self-contained Kubernetes cluster. It's a, it's a real Kubernetes cluster. It's not Minikube. Um, I was having problems with Minikube. It, it, it like tends to kind of lag behind the main project. And so I just took the hit and just created um, a full uh, like Kubernetes cluster running on a single instance. Now, you can then add on new instances that'll join the master, right? And this is using kube admin, uh, K-U-B-E-A-D-M. Um, and you can add as many GPUs or CPUs as you like. They just become part of the cluster. So really this is, you know, think of this as a seed, uh, like for example, that you would bring back to your company. Um, you would have this running and then once more and more people start to adopt it, uh, you can just, just add servers, right? Um, and so we do everything from uh, model training. Um, we support distributed TensorFlow. We have examples of that uh, to the model serving, which is really our, you know, uh, sort of bread and butter at Pipeline. Okay, I'm just going to check, keep an eye on the. Uh, this is being, um, uh, yeah. So this is being recorded. Link not working. Are there other people having problems? Um, I started the servers about 30 minutes ago, so they. It might take a little bit more. Um, and please please don't hit refresh a thousand times because there are only um, a finite number of these servers. I was actually bound uh, by the Amazon capacity today. I have enough quota, but they physically didn't have enough capacity um, to go beyond the number that I got. So, uh, Srikant, can you send me the, the link? It's, uh, uh, okay, yeah, there's the link there. Um, make sure when you're chatting, if you do want to chat with others, make sure you do the drop down to change it to all panelists and the attendees. Talk is recorded. Uh, okay, so if People are having problems. My server seems to be up, not the community one, but the uh, standalone instance that I spun up for myself. Um, and some of them just take a little bit longer. These are huge Docker images in some cases because we have all of the optimizations within TensorFlow turned on. And um, so, yeah, go to that URL. Also paste it in the chat. Uh, And then what I'm going to do, I'm assuming you guys can can get in. Let me know. This is partially, you know, to help you guys out. And then I want some feedback, too, um, as to, uh, you know, how things could be improved. You know, um, one thing we do differently at Pipeline is we develop um, right, like completely in the open, right? We're not this stealth group, um, you know, that's going to just hide in a corner for six months and then release something. We've been fully engaged with this community um, for the last, you know, year. And, um, uh, okay. Oh, someone, oh, uh, the link that was copied and pasted is actually wrong. There's an extra zero in there. So let me, Or it's three zero zero five zero. And it might take a bit to respond because there's a whole ton of people on this call and they're they're all trying to grab the URL. Um, and there should be no region restrictions uh, as far as I know. Um, if you're trying to use if, if you got in, can someone confirm that they got in, that their instance works? There's just a lot of bad news on this chat. And uh, yes, I would like to see some, some you know, good news here. Um, okay, so people are getting in. So if you're in and you're not able to run uh, cells, that's typically because you have some firewall, some sort of VPN. So Jupyter Lab is what we're using. And Jupyter Lab is essentially a complete rewrite of Jupyter on the front end, it's still using all the IPython notebooks and all the Jupyter notebook back end, you know, for, and these kernels and it, it can discover the existing kernels and that kind of thing. But uh, Jupyter Lab, we're actually, I think this should be the latest. You, you guys have the latest as of, um, I think, uh, yesterday when I looked. 
Um, also, one thing to note, oh, and then log in for uh, Jupyter, I should put that in here, is just admin uh, with no password. Or actually, yeah, like you can use roots. You can basically use any uh, like username. Yeah, Jupyter Lab. Okay, so if you get the JSON back, use the IP address, use the host name um, from the JSON. Uh, put that in your browser. And from that point, you should have your own. Okay, so for those people that can't get in, try the community edition. Some people are saying it's slow. Um, so just kind of bear with me. I'm actually just going to walk through some of these notebooks because we only have about 30 minutes left. Um, if you guys do have specific issues, throw them in the chat. To, yeah, the, the PEM file, um, let's talk about that offline. Uh, I want to keep everyone on the same path right now instead of, uh, but yeah, you can certainly uh, shell into that thing. Typically, when we do the workshop, we don't um, shell anywhere because we could do everything from uh, the actual terminal here within. Um, so ping me offline. Someone's raising their hand here. Let me see what's going on. Okay, for the person who is raising their hand, just post it into the chat. You can just send it to all panelists. Hey, JC, did you get in yet? All right, so I'm gonna keep going here. Um, I am in on the community edition, the live one, right? So, um, okay. So this is the actual notebooks that we use for the workshop. Now, right, like you don't really need to, to go in and copy all these down to your local drive. You know, that's something I do all the time when I'm in training as well too. But these are all, um, these are all here on this, um, the GitHub, I believe it's in gpu.ml, something like that. So if you want to, certainly copy them, I don't care. Um, you know, I built these for you guys. Uh, but yeah, so I just want to go through here. Okay, the JSON has the elements allocation index and time. Uh, grab, I think it's the allocation. Okay, so let's just do a quick sanity check here. Um, oh, you know what, I'm gonna actually switch over to my the same exact version that you guys are running. That way we have the same GPUs and that kind of thing. Okay, so I have this hidden behind a particular host. Um, so let me show you guys. If you click train models, that's gonna pull up Jupyter. If you click view training, that's gonna pull up TensorBoard. So we'll actually uh, train a model. Um, looks like I, I did one earlier, so that one showed up. Uh, if you click manage clusters, this is kind of fun. You can actually uh, view the Kubernetes cluster live in action. Some of the secret stuff has been hidden, so don't worry about those warnings. But you can see we're actually running a live Kubernetes cluster, the full dashboard. Uh, one other thing. So this is actually going to be, there's no data in here yet, but if I go back to the real community edition where we do have lots of people in there, you can actually see different versions of the models. Uh, so this monitor predictions is actually the same uh, data that is being shown here. So if, if I click this and generate a bunch of traffic, um, you guys won't have this yet because we haven't deployed the model, but uh, we'll see it right there. So if you want to, you can kind of bounce between your instance and the real community edition here. Um, oh, and I, I think I have my Yes, yeah, so I have my own intercom here popping up. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, all right, so let me kill that, kill that, kill that. So yeah, TensorBoard's gonna be interesting. This was the other big thing. I think I mentioned this on the last call. I can't remember where I was in uh, the process, but 
um, you can actually deploy functions now. So we're uh, building on top of this open FOS, uh project. Um, it's my buddy Alex in London. And um, we already have one out there. We should be able to actually paste in. So if you go to the quick start, we can grab um, the, oh, actually, let's do this even better. I, I keep forgetting that I added this. Uh, where is it? We can actually grab the curl commands right from here. You can grab Python code, um, and this will actually make a call directly uh, to that service. And let me just let me grab the data here from the shell. And yeah, actually, this URL is slightly wrong. I changed it last night. I can change this super fast, though. But let me just show you guys. We should be able to paste in some JSON blob here. Um, so this is the open FOS. This is where you can just create arbitrary functions. So this is where we're seeing people stitch together, um, right, like custom ensembles, right? So uh, let me go to the community edition here, because there's really no model that's out there yet. Uh, let me get to this one. Let's hit invoke. And there we go. So this is from the open FOS stuff. We're actually treating our models um, just like a normal function. Uh, the cool thing is through Jupyter, right, like we could actually deploy custom functions with custom code. I think I have an example of that working. Um, but let me get back to that in a sec here. Let me fix this uh, URL here. And then you guys can, yes, yeah, so I know I'm, I'm bouncing around quite a bit. Uh, let's see, oh, down here, right? Let me fix this URL. We should be able to actually curl it. Uh, okay, uh, dash API, something like that. Yeah, I embed. Yeah, okay. So let me go to here. I'm going to fix this live pipeline docs API. Not sure if you guys know this, but you could actually edit things directly inside of GitHub. Uh, it's kind of nice. You have to be pretty disciplined, though, to know. Uh, and this should just be in this locations, I believe. Let me see. Yeah. Boom. So now that that's saved, if I hit refresh here, you guys can hit refresh also on your screens. Um, you should see the new URL, hopefully. Um, it's not showing up there, but why isn't it showing up there? And that's the master branch too, right? Yes. Anyway, this, oh yeah, okay. So this just took a couple of the refreshes. Now we can actually do this from the command line as well too. So, um, boom. And there we go. So from the command line, I just grabbed this exact same curl. I could do a wget. I can um, copy and paste this, put it right into my Python code, into my notebook, into whatever. Uh, JavaScript, you can do jQuery or raw, um, uh, yeah, raw the XML HTTP request. Um, you got your Java code, Node, PHP, HTTP2. Um, some good stuff here. I think there's even, yeah, the objective C. So uh, yeah, this is making things a bit more usable. So you can actually deploy the model and then test it that way. Um, so there's, a, there's a few different ways to test it. Uh, let me, let's go into, uh, let me just show one thing here. Go to the models. I think I even have a newer version of this. I was playing with. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, 
All right, and I'm going to do the same dash u ignore installed no cache. This is actually all on the quick start docs. Um, and I'm going to jump down to. Oh, yeah, so here's the actual REST API. Um, before I was doing it command line, but you could actually use the REST API against the admin server. Um, I actually just turned it on so that you can do the actual CLI. So like you could actually run the exact same command that I was doing over here uh, to do the routing. Should be able to run it directly uh, in here. Let's give it a try. So jump set bash, boom. And we're going to shift everything back to 0 0.25 and then have um, 0 0.50, uh, what did that say? Oop, boom. All right, so there we did the split and we should, um, if we actually, if we get rid of the shadowing, let's just, do all 0 uh, 0.25 and boom, boom, boom. And again, we should back here see this traffic. So this opens the door to multi-arm bandits and sort of adaptive traffic shifting, um, something we've been talking about since the beginning of pipeline. So um, here we've got 0 0.25 is the only one taking traffic right now. Um, let me go back here. Let me show you one where we're actually building. Oh yeah, and then you can embed this iframe directly in your notebook if you'd like. Um, here's that same curl command. Actually, this needs to change to MNIST invocations. That should return us the predictions. Yep, this also tells you which variant was part of the prediction. So when you're doing ensembles, you'll, you'll actually get back um, by like multiple variants there. So that's kind of cool. Um, and someone's up ahead of me running cells up here, so I'm going to try to do this quick. But here's a case, and we're doing some base64 magic here. We have we've defined a function that's all it's doing is taking in JSON, and then it's going to return that same exact JSON. So let's see if we can get this to work. Um, so here, uh, error message is empty. That's good. We have created. The function now we're going to actually build it into a first class Docker image. Uh, it's going to be called Ensemble. The version is going to be A. Uh, and let's so this is actually calling um, the uh, like REST API. And in the background, it's it's actually building this now. Um, I didn't get this to work for today, but uh, we do have it so that um, it will show you the actual output. So you know this is going to take a bit because it's actually running. Um, the Docker build in the background, but it's actually uh, the well, new version will, you know, start showing in a streaming manner. Uh, and then also it will let you continue to run other commands. Right now we're uh, blocking um, until this is done and this will probably time out because this might take a minute or two to um, actually build. But when we're done with that, we would then push it to the Docker repo, right? Like again, this could be any repo. This could be a private repo. Uh, I believe I'm just pointing to um, our Docker hub. And then we would, we're stopping anything that exists. Uh, we would just start it up like this and then um, we'll route traffic to it. And then we would scale it up if we want. And uh, what, what will happen then is once this actually gets pushed out and then started, it will then start to show up within this open pause. It'll become another uh, like function here. And then you can pass any JSON and you know, it'll just echo it back. That's just the silly example that I have here. But that kind of shows you the end to end from Jupyter where you can uh, create functions on the fly. Um, you can also of course create models on the fly. Uh, let's see, I think that one creating the model is up here. I kind of skipped over. There's a couple of different ways to do it. You, you so you can actually, you know, uh, like train the model here within Jupyter and then zip it up or tar it up and push it and then follow kind of the same steps 
so what we did before was just pass a function, you know, just a string that like represented the function and we just, you know, base 64 uh, packed it up there. But, um, and then you would drop traffic and then boom, this thing is live directly from Jupyter. You can now push models and functions out to live production in a safe controlled manner. Um, okay, so, Actually, I have to plug in my laptop here. One sec. <clears throat> yeah, please post any questions in there. Uh, hopefully, you guys get a chance to hop on your servers and play with that P100. It's a pretty nice machine. Um, if you notice, I actually I did I put a little fun thing in here for you where I built the latest TensorFlow 160 uh, release candidate one and have that in here. So. Probably not many places have this going. Even if you have it running on your local laptop, it's it's not built the way that we built it, which you know has all the optimizations and it's specifically tuned for this V100. It has the uh, floating point 16 enabled, um, and you could really get some some pretty sweet performance. There's a lot of mystery flags when you're building uh, TensorFlow, you know, uh, for these kind of newer features. So if you do have questions about those, just ping me and I can point you uh, to the appropriate parts of, of the Docker build. But yeah, so if we look here, we'll see. Um, yeah, so that one I was sweating, uh, making sure it was gonna work and it actually seems pretty stable. A uh, couple things to note about TensorFlow uh, 1.6 is we're starting to see Kafka support that's creeping in there. This is something um, that we are going to be laser focused on. And by this time next month uh, for the next demo, we'll have an end-to-end -end Kafka demo uh, with TensorFlow. Um, right now, you can actually spin up, if you look at the full pipeline CLI, um, just by running pipeline empty here, you'll see some Kafka support. Uh, and you could start a stream, you could describe it, you could consume it, um, and of course, you know, publish it from your code. So all of our models actually have uh, Kafka loggers that you can tap into. So let me show like a sample. Uh, I think we might have them disabled just for simplicity for the 1.5.0 release, but uh, pipeline predict. So the one benefit, of course, about using pipeline uh, model serving and training is that we have it all hooked up to all of um, the like monitoring tools and dashboards and things like that. So, uh, oh yeah, so I think we actually took it out, but it would just be like another logger here. It would be logger, um, you know, Kafka logger equals uh, blah, blah, blah. And you just tack it on um, to the master logger here, or I think, it's actually, yeah, just another log handler. So I think it's something like this. And this is actually out of the pipeline open source stuff. So it would be, uh, I think it's like pipeline logger dot Kafka handler. Like that. Um, and you then would just add it. So you would say logger add handler. So this is the like master logger stream handler like that, or, you know, Kafka handler, whatever you want to call it. And then at this point, you're now pushing to Kafka. And one thing that we like to do is actually tap into the stream and detect sort of unconfident predictions. Um, we've got a project right now that we're finishing up that will post to Slack. And we have built this at uh, certain customers and then we found it like so useful and fun that we're actually gonna roll it into pipeline itself. So all you need to do is give, um, you know, or, or like set up your uh, like Slack, uh, like integration between pipeline and um, turn on the Kafka logging and then we'll actually tap in and be posting those unconfident predictions. And then throughout the day, you could crowdsource with your team and actually correct those predictions, things like that. Um, okay, some stuff did change around in this this model directory. If you have pulled down this code before, you might want to make sure that you sync with master um, or at least the R15 uh, branch. Um, we'll be releasing R15, I believe, today or tomorrow. 
uh, the pending. I have a bunch of calls right after this, so it'll probably be tomorrow. But um, one five is is pretty stable, and uh, if you want access to this stuff, let me know. We'll get you this going on your own. Can we access uh, the the recording? Will be posted. Um, all recordings are posted to the Pipeline AI YouTube channel, um, which is, you can find it off the website is usually how I do it, uh, but I think it's this. So I will post this here pretty soon, right after the meeting. And what was the other thing I wanted to show you guys? Yeah, so the open file stuff, so now keep in mind that this is the combination of the open FOS project, which sort of by itself has a very focused, um, right? Like uh, um, it's, it's basically meant to turn existing scripts into functions or, you know, it, it, um, it supports Python, it supports bash, it supports, right? Like basically anything. Uh, and we've actually taken that project, rolled it in, and now sort of added all of this traffic shifting and this experimentation and this ensembling. So really, we've sort of hydrated this open file stuff and sort of created um, a ton more use cases out of it. And it's all tied into the same metrics as all the rest of the pipeline stuff as well, too. Uh, and it's tied in here with the Jupyter Lab stuff. Um, we're also going to get open files working with streaming. So these functions. Oh yeah, and so that's the other cool thing. It looks like someone found it. You can actually deploy any new function. There's this concept from OpenFAS uh, that point that of a store, and you can essentially deploy any um, uh, thing that's been registered with the store. This is all you know open source stuff, so there's no money being transacted. Um, or you can put in your own. So if, for example, we did end up building that ensemble one, uh, which we probably have by now. Um, it would be Ensemble A. That should be the name of it, something like that. Um, it will likely show up here once we're done here, or we could actually explicitly, you know, and if you have your own uh, private repo, you know, it would be private docker dot my business dot com slash, you know, whatever. Uh, I, for these things, I typically just use Docker Hub. You would give it a name like Ensemble, um, A, something like that. But let's see if we can actually do it completely through the notebook here. So uh, we should be able to, let's see if that ever finished. Again, that's on nest invocations. Uh, where was the actual, there it was. Okay, so that's the build. Uh, if we build it again, actually, it should run super quickly and we should get the output, yeah, because Docker's doing its thing and it's, um, okay, so now we're telling the admin server to push it to Docker Hub and now we're actually gonna start it up. So let's start this up. And, um, we're also going to route some traffic, so we're doing some Base64 magic here just because of the way that, that the REST API is currently written, um, which we are slight, yeah, right, like we're going back to like clean that up. We can add to, so we can scale this out through the admin server as well. So let's do scale. And at the end of this, we should have two, let's not run the stop. Um, and now we can actually through the notebook, if we want, we can do, um, we can either run a kube command directly, which you may or may not want to do, or you can invoke, uh, you could also do pipeline. I believe it's, uh, what is it? Predict uh, kube endpoints. This is going to return all the endpoints that are possible. So here's that invocations thing, and then here is the ensemble. Um, and we set up some routes, so 100% of the traffic should be going. Uh, we can also do ensemble model tag equals A. This will just give us the detailed. Did that not? Can't remember if that's. 
Um, but the cool one is that you can see all of them right here. And then you can actually grab those and use those. Um, let's switch over to, oh, and then we like could also use the REST API to do all of this as well too, but we're just kind of shortcutting it. Uh, let me just look and make sure that we did get the scale, the scale out event did take. So ensemble, ensemble, okay. Um, and so one thing to note, if, if you are savvy with Docker and with uh, Kubernetes and that kind of thing, you'll notice that there's two of two, which means there's two um, containers in one pod. And you're probably wondering what's the second container because the first one is obviously the Docker image that we created earlier. The second one is, uh, so that's the Envoy sidecar. So Envoy is used by Istio, which is what we use for all this traffic routing, traffic mirroring, and all this intelligent routing. Um, and with everything that you deploy, you tack on, and yeah, this is all done for you with just, you know, this is all hidden behind uh, these REST APIs and this command line. But that uh, second uh, like container then handles all of the uh, like traffic routing. And um, so it's a super lightweight C++ um, based project out of the folks from Lyft. Uh, it's called Envoy. So you should check that out. All right. So now that we have these things deployed out there and they seem to be running. Let's go to our friend OpenFaz over here. And there it is. And we should just be able to give it any JSON. Uh, who, let's give it who, double quote, bar, boom, and invoke. And we should get the exact same thing back. We see the variant that was involved. Um, and yeah. So that's an example of deploying that live. Uh, we could also push out a new version of this model. Back here. I kind of skipped over that and just did. Uh, oh yeah, because that, yeah. So that's gonna involve the upload and stuff, which um, let's just avoid that for right now. Okay. So we're coming up at about 10 minutes left. I think I want to point out what was another thing. Let me go to pipeline just to refresh my memory. We updated this a little bit. We picked up a bunch of new uh, people just in the last couple weeks. Um, we've been having a lot of support requests come in and uh, you know, pretty cool stuff. So just keep an eye on this front page for all the, the people that we're uh, like working with. We also were now the, the first San Francisco-based Google developer experts um, here at Pipeline. So we picked up that badge, which gives us access to the TensorFlow summits and Google I.O. and all the stuff that, you know, the uh, like common person like me just a few weeks ago before this, this badge, um, we had a hard time getting into. So I can now send some folks there. Um, also, some more exciting news. This is sort of under wraps, um, but when I post it to YouTube, it'll be public. We are bringing on uh, one more person. Uh, he's a key um, uh, person in the pipeline community and has agreed to leave his Chris job and come join the um, challenges of a startup. So we'll be having more resources here um, just ahead of our official GA launch. And if you guys are interested, shoot me a note. We, we just added this intercom thing here as well, which is really nice. This is actually our new support channel. Uh, so you just click this and you know you can ask any question. How do I get uh, a standalone addition into my enterprise? Boom. And then that'll start up a combo. We see it on like our end and uh, we'll respond. Uh, let's see other thing here. There's a new help support desk as well too so support we clean this up quite a bit um, and has a lot of good stuff in fact you can if you search the tensorflow stuff we have a lot of kubernetes stuff jupyter notebook and um, tensorflow survival guide the serving survival guide this is much sought after doc uh, kind of demystifying tensorflow serving uh, or as much as it can be and uh, showing some some cool tips and tricks there. We also have a new section within here called um, our favorite posts, you know, things that we're currently reading and that kind of stuff. So 
um, I've been adding articles and videos here as needed. So yeah, check that out. It's help.pipeline.ai. Um, and let's see, let me check the questions here. Uh, newbie questions? Yeah, if, yeah, like feel free. All right, so we have about six minutes left. We got the open file stuff, TensorBoard integration. You can see the graphs. One cool thing about this, if you pull up, oh, okay, so this was only a CPU model. Let me go train a GPU model. So, oh, and then I should highlight too that, uh, yeah, so while we do have have control and sort of prefer our notebooks for um, at these workshops and stuff just because we know how they work. Um, there are other contributions that I've been pulling and there's a few that I kind of keep an eye on and it's some of the uh, Keras stuff uh, coming out of um, the creator of that project. Also the SageMaker stuff. We love SageMaker. SageMaker handles um, a lot of the infrastructure and once we get to their Kubernetes clusters as well, right, like once Amazon finally uh, like releases that service, we'll start to use that more heavily. Um, but we still sit on top of these things and right, like do this intelligent routing and uh, this sort of predictive level metrics. And you know, so there's still value add there. Um, also, so there's my buddy Magnus. Uh, he currently lives in Greece. Uh, he has a, like, this crazy YouTube channel that he maintains. Uh, I think the details are here, and you should check it out. He has a lot of good videos. He's you know pretty funny, snarky guy. Um, we have, I think, the very, very latest. Uh, I think the last one he did was this 20 natural language processing. He goes back, and he will update these and the video when things change. Um, so keep an eye on that. One other thing to note, too, we do have... In the pipeline stuff here, GPU workshop, we, we just added this S3 data set sample. So data sets are, right, like just like they sound from kind of the Spark world, they're a way to get to data and to do ETL and uh, right, like do it in a highly parallel C++ fashion. Um, you script it at the Python level and uh, point to an S3 bucket. And so this is showing the super like natural integration between uh, TensorFlow and S3. And, you know, just as long as you have the IAM roles set up. Um, so really, when you go to deploy standalone into your enterprise, which is how, um, or like standalone edition um, is meant to be, and, and these terms I'm pulling from here, uh, you, the big, well, yeah, so like the big trick is just getting um, the, so things like the S3 IAM role set up and the ability to get to your Docker repo as well. Uh, so there's you know quite a bit of um, sort of upfront like set up here. Um, but and then also we help you get set up with the proper quotas. We help you you know pick the instance sizes, things like that. So really, you know, standalone edition is basically what we're all using. It's you know kind of a private version of the community version. Um, you have a bit more, you know, there's like OAuth and there's the IAM security. Oh, yes, we have OAuth here actually too as well. Um, but uh, when you go to the Enterprise Edition, or like this is where you're actually adding in new workers to that, that uh, standalone master. And so um, that's all what's pretty much done. We'll be releasing that, I think, the end or no, the middle of March. Um, so standalone and then uh, the enterprise shortly after, but really, if you, I think you can get pretty far with standalone. This is something we talk to a lot of customers about. Um, the, you know, yeah, so these instances now are so huge, right? These like Amazon instances now have four terabytes of RAM and uh, it's feasible even for each like data scientist to have their own standalone and, and just basically own right, like that entire instance. And so this is a deployment configuration that we're starting to play with, and uh, it's actually working pretty well. So as long as all of the standalone additions, you know, each uh, like data scientist, each data engineer, whatever, can can get to the same S3 bucket, um, then you know things are good. And uh, that's a good way to do the training sort of in Jupyter, and then export it out to S3 that model, and then you would shift uh, to serving mode, and then 
we actually have one customer who trains and takes the exact same standalone instance and shuts everything else down and just spins up TensorFlow serving. And so they essentially, you know, train, they keep the model on that same machine, right? Like they obviously make a snapshot and send it um, to right, like S3 or to like GitHub, whatever. And then, um, but that physical instance stays the exact same and they just tear down, right? Like using Kubernetes commands, you can, um, right, like tear down Jupyter, you can tear all these things down and just have the model server running. So, right, like think of it like you um, are planting a seed and then, you know, this single instance then sprouts and now it's, it's serving to the public. So that's a, a super interesting uh, deployment model. Not a lot of people would, you know, probably subscribe to that, but, um, we are pushing, you know, one single instance uh, per person, and that seems to be working out pretty well, actually. There, when, um, and so one thing we don't emphasize is that, like, we do have Spark and stuff, uh, you know, that are on this uh, specific instance. You can turn that stuff on and off. Um, right now, it's turned off just for simplicity. Actually, I think you can install PySpark and basically do whatever. But uh, so you could feasibly do all of your ETL and all of your feature engineering and your model training, you know, inside of one standalone edition and uh, just spin it up with a really big instance and then tear it down at the end of the day. Okay, let me check for more questions here. Uh, uh, okay, Magnus's YouTube channel, go into Community Edition and it, it's under uh, HVOS labs, I believe. So poke around in here, uh, the HVOS labs, TensorFlow. And I think in this readme is where he has it. So since I have it up here, I'll just post it. Uh, someone's asking about the math behind artificial intelligence. We actually haven't had that meetup yet. We had to reschedule it um, because one of the speakers was out of town. Um, so we actually packed on a couple more talks onto it as well too. So I believe some people probably have it or uh, like had it on their calendar. Cause I know when you sync up Google calendar with meetup, um, bad things happen, especially, well, specifically when we really have to move meetups because that calendar event stays and we've had people actually show up to the event and, you know, at the venue and everything. So this is the new date. It's March 1st. And um, boom, so there's that. Uh, you want to build standalone right now? <laughs> yeah, JC, hit me up offline. Yeah, we'll talk about it. And we're at the top of the hour. So I uh, look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Yeah, we had a good crowd here. Yeah, so hit me up for the early access to standalone. We haven't officially launched. Uh, we're gonna freeze 1.5 um, of pipeline and then uh, we will then start to get it in the hands of people, right? Like again, the standalone does require IAM roles and things like that. So we are going to handhold for, you know, like a select few, uh, like customers to begin with. And then we're going to start, you know, building all the, the real cloud formation and Terraform scripts and all the you know good stuff. So cool. I will talk to you guys soon. I'm going to clean up this video a bit because the beginning we had some, some dead space and then I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.